Sister Phyllis asked Pastor Clay, so who you have to preach on July the 9th? He said, Brother Hill. And I thought Pastor turned into the greatest comedian ever because I'm like, really? <laughs> I actually thought he was joking. But as I stand before you today, I see that he was not joking. It's an honor and a privilege. I'd like to first and foremost give glory and honor to God, uh, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who's the head of my life. To Pastor Clay, our senior pastor in his absence, the pastoral staff, Pastor Strong, Pastor Relaford. Um, and I just really just um, thank God for this opportunity to uh, stand before you this morning uh, preaching the word of God uh, to you this morning. Before we get started, I'd like to open up with a word of prayer then we'll get into it. Let us bow. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus. Humble hearts with the spirit of thanksgiving, knowing that we would not be here if it wasn't for you. We thank you for your sacrifice you made for us all. We thank you for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. We thank you, Lord, for your word that says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Behold, all old things has passed away. Behold, all things has become new. Lord, we thank you for the newness of life that you have given us all. We thank you for your power of the Holy Spirit that empowers us all to live this Christian life the way you intended it to be lived. Allow, Lord, your servant, Lord, to be decreased so you may increase, that, that the words that I say will be nothing that of my own words, but be only of your words. That, Lord, that the words that come forth, Lord, will not return void, that the words that are spoken, Lord, will be words that you want your hearers and your children to hear. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. For those that don't know much about me, I'll give you a little glimpse of who I am. Um, I grew up in pretty much in all three decades. I grew up in the 70s. I was a child in the 70s. Experienced my teenage years in the 80s and my late teens in the 90s. They grew me up as an adult. There was a lot of choices that a, that a young man could make, and I pretty much made a lot of bad decisions back then. But I recall, uh, well, I'll let you know that I was a huge, huge hip hop fan. I mean, from 1979 to the Sugar Hill Gang. I know y'all remember that, somebody remember that. And I grew up with hip hop. But in 1991, there was a group called Black Sheep. And the Black Sheep had a hit single that year, it was called The Choice Is Yours. You might remember from a car commercial a couple of years back where two mice was going down the street in the car and they was playing this song back. And the song basically said, the choice is yours. You can get with this, you can get with that. You can get with this, you can get with that. It was one or the other, not the same. This or that. In the Christian life, we find that 
Either we're going to get with the life of the world, the life that we are we're transferred out of, or the life of Christ, the new birth that we was birthed into. If you haven't already turned your Bibles, turn your Bibles to the book of Philippians. Chapter 3. Let us stand for the reading of God's word. Starting at verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious. But for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these things I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, from whom I suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Verse 9, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness with God, which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. The title of this message that God has prepared through me, you may be seated. Is life moves in forward motion. Paul says something key in verse four. He said, though I also might have confidence in the flesh, Now that's verse 3. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. What we have done before we knew Christ. Some of us, um, before salvation, was not new to church. Um, we went to uh, various churches. A lot of us as children didn't have any choice but to go to church. I know coming up that uh, my mother um, took church very seriously. Um, we could not do anything on Sunday that was secular or that was uh, 
not related to church. Um, we was taught to pay our tithes. We was taught to, you know, take communion. Um, certain things, you did say grace before meals. We was taught to do all these things. And what I, what I was raised to believe, not only from my mother, but just, just being around is that Sunday was this special day uh, that you dedicated to God, but I was never really taught about that all the other days was God's too. Amen. That Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, those was God's as well. Um, had the mindset that as long as I did these particular things, that I was okay with God. That I went to, you go to the right denomination. You're around the right people. You do all these things that esteems us in a religious uh, world or, or the way the society thinks that church should be or, or Christianity should be. But then after salvation, I knew that there was nothing that I could have done ever to make me right with God. Nothing. No matter how religious I may have been, no matter how many good deeds that I may have, you know, tried to do, good Samaritan acts, um, whatever, you know, would make myself righteous, there's nothing that I could ever have done to make myself right. There's nothing that you could have done to make yourself right. Because it's not about what we can do is about what he has done. Yes. Paul uses the analogy of a runner to describe the Christian spiritual growth. The believer has not reached his goal of Christ's likeness, but like a runner in a race, he must continue to pursue it. That is, this is the goal for every believer. You remember days of way back, long, long, long time ago, whether you was chasing a job or career, whether you was chasing that fine young man that you was after or that beautiful young lady, whether he was chasing money, illicit highs for his drugs, of how bad did you pursue those things which you wanted to grab hold of? Can I get a witness? Amen. There was a time in my youth, I know exactly what Paul is getting at, because it was a time in my youth that I, I chased Music. I spent the latter parts of my uh, teenage years in my early adulthood living actually in the studio. I would sleep there. I would go there. Couldn't nobody stop me from going to the studio. Um, you had to do this. I would. Sometimes calling sick at work to go to the studio wasn't a wise decision, but I would do those things. So I was chasing after this dream of being this mega superstar, rap star, and I was relentless in my pursuit. I didn't let nothing get in the way. I could not keep a girlfriend back then because I was married actually to the studio or to music. That's what I was after. 
So I chased it. I chased it and 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 chased it. Because that was consuming me. So I see that the Christian life or Christ likeness, the same way that I pursue those things is the same way I should pursue Christ likeness. There's nothing that I could have done or obtain through that pursuit that would ever fulfill me like I thought it would. As I look back on my life, I realize that I dodged the bullet because who knows the person I would be if those things would have came to pass. But something happened to me on October the 4th of 1993. What happened was, our pastor has shared, it was, diff it was something that was different going on in my life at that time. What happened was that um, I was being called out of the darkness into God's light, but I didn't understand the things that was going on in my life, the transition that was being made at the time. I didn't, I didn't understand it. Until February 12th of 1995 is when I gave my life to the Lord. But the same way I pursued the things in the world is the same way that we should pursue things for Christ. Paul was, in a sense, of the perfect pursuer of God for us, like for us, the law is concerned. But he discovered that everything that he did prior to his meeting Christ, a Christ calling him, was rubbish, was trash, was garbage. Some translations said it was dung. It says in your word, it says in, in Philippians, it says now that I have all, not now, not that I have already attained or am already per perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Lay hold means to possess. Possess. You possess it. We all know what it means to possess something. We all may know what it means to, that when we lay hold of something. We all know. We experience that every day. We lay hold certain things that we really shouldn't give much value to. But we lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. So as we lay hold to Christ, Christ has laid hold to us. 
we press on. We move forward. We chase. We run after with vigor and strength, energetic, we pursue Christ-likeness. All believers are to chase after Christ-likeness. Because that's who we want to be like, right? We don't want to be like Mike or, or Steph Curry or whoever. I don't want to be anything that God has said not, was not supposed to be. Do we want to be like Christ? We want to be like the one that saved us. He says, not, have, not that I've already attained, but the race toward Christ like it begins with a sense of honesty and dissatisfaction, press on. The Greek word was used of a sprinter, refers to aggressive inner. Uh, energetic action, Paul pursued sanctification with all his might, stand, straining every spiritual muscle to win the prize. Lay hold means to make one's own possession. Christ chose for Paul the ultimate purpose of conforming Paul to his glorious image. Turn your Bibles to Romans 8.29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the first born amongst many brethren. So he foreknew us, he predestined us, that he also called whom he called that he might uh, conform to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn of many brethren. Moreover, he predestined, these also called, from whom he called, these he also justified, whom he justified, these he also glorified. So brothers and sisters, He foreknew us, he predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. That's where we, that's where we headed to. That's what we should chase after. Christ likeness is continued to pursue in the life of the believer. Brethren, I do not, uh, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. When we wanted that job or that promotion, 
on our job. Was there anything that you would do than not to get it? So they tell you, well, Mr. So-and-so, Mr. Jackson, I'm sorry you was turned down for the promotion. Maybe next time. Did you quit there? No. You continue to go after it. You did your job with excellence. You went to work every day on time. Clocked out for lunch on time. Did everything that you need to do to obtain this specific goal. You didn't let nothing get in the way of you pursuing that goal. If you had to stay late, you stayed late. If you had to come in early, you came in early. If you had to work on your day off, you worked on your day off. If you missed out on basketball practice or, or soccer practice or whatever, to obtain the particular goal, you did nothing get in the way of the goal that you were to obtain for that promotion. Same thing as the education. You stay study late at the library. You did all these things to get the good grades and get the GPA up to 4.0, 3.0 because you had a goal in mind at the end of the time that you was in school to receive your bachelor's, your master's, your associate's, or whatever that you was pursuing, you would let nothing get in the way of you obtaining or reaching that goal. And those are good things to go after. Education, promotion on a job, but those things that are good to go after, I submit to you, those things can interfere with this pursuit. We get busy. And those that have children definitely get busy. Things in the morning. It's some kind of, sometimes that your day can just go on and on and on, and then you come to the end of conclusion at the end of the day. <clears throat> well, I didn't spend no time with God. I didn't pray. I didn't read my Bible. I didn't talk to anybody about the, word, the Lord. Before you know it, it's time to lay your head down on the pillow to get ready for the next day. Athletes train. What we see on the court, or what we see on the football field, or we see from an Olympic track store we see the end result. We see the fruit of their labor. We see the end result. But we don't see the hours of training that it took in the hours of sacrifice that they made. We have to be intentionally make an effort to pursue Christ likeness. This is a man that's speaking from prison. To a church that was very faithful to Paul's ministry.
This is very encouraging. Because if I was in prison, I would be focused on myself. If that was me, I wouldn't be focused on no on nobody else. But he's telling them to press on. There's a song back in the day by a group called The Impress, and they had a song called Keep On Pushing. We got to keep on pushing. When a runner gets a bad start out the block, what they have to do is dig in deeper and run faster. Because they got to catch up. We can't get entangled about what happened yesterday. Yesterday's defeat could hinder today's victory. We can complain, why I didn't do this or I didn't do that. We can say, I shoulda, woulda, coulda. But what good does that do for us? Paul says in verse 13, he said, Brethren, I do not count myself that apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. When you drive your car, when you leave here, when you drive your car, period, which one do you focus more on? Do you focus on the windshield or the rear view mirror? If you look in the rear view mirror all the time, what's going to end up happening to you? You gonna wreck? But the windshield is to look forward. A runner cannot be, a runner that's running the race cannot focus on the man that's next to him. Or the man is right here because he's focused on the finish line. Some people we just can't run with. Someone that's going in the opposite direction that you're going in in your life that will hinder you from this, you may have to leave behind. Some people that you, you started out with, might not end with. But we have to be focused. There's a focus here. We have to focus on obtaining and continuously pursuing Christ likeness. Do you know that your past can hinder you in this walk, in this pursuit? Your past can get you tangled up. Past accomplishments past victories, past defeats. It can definitely get you caught up 
that you don't achieve what you set out to achieve. And then I was just gonna be jamming after my first lesson. Just like my pursuit of guitar was short lived, this pursuit for Christ likeness is not short lived. It's something that's continuous. It's a continuous journey, it's continuous. Until it's complete. And it's not going to be complete until we get to heaven. Brothers and sisters. Being conformed to the image of Christ is what we all are after. We should let nothing or no one and no situation, no circumstance to ever hinder us from obtaining it. We have to chase after it. It has to be continuous until it's complete. Don't be like me. One guitar lesson and you done. I was one and done. Then who, who would have known 15 years later, I see Norman again. He was on his second album. That, my, that if I would have kept on with the guitar, who, who would have known what I would have been? But one thing about that, though, is I can't focus on what, what could have been yesterday. But I can do something about today. So maybe yesterday we didn't run for Christ like we should. Maybe last hour, maybe last year, maybe we didn't, we didn't pursue Christ's likeness the way that we should. Maybe we didn't press on. Maybe we gave up in the midst of pressing. Maybe we decided that we wanted to quit. But that was yesterday. Today is a new day. It's about what we're going to do now this time forward. That's about what's, what, what we're gonna do. Getting tangled up in the past is not productive. What you trusted in for righteousness with God in the past is irrelevant right now. It's about what we trust in the righteousness of Christ. We cannot change, cannot obtain justification adding anything to Christ. You cannot obtain sanctification by adding anything to Christ. You cannot, cannot obtain glorification by any human effort. We're only righteous because he's declared us righteous. We experience sanctification because he declared us righteous and now we are set apart unto him. 
will we be glorified because he justified us and he sanctified us, therefore he glorified us. This is about God working inside of us, our obtaining Christ's likeness is because he is in place in us, the spirit of God that moves us towards Christ's likeness. It has nothing to do with us, but it has everything to do with him. So therefore we have to pursue Christ's likeness because we know him. He has given us his spirit. He wants to conform us to the image of his son. So if you didn't run the way that you ran yesterday, run today. Find somebody to run with. If you're running and you run out of steam, go alongside your brother or your sister. Help them run. Challenge them to run. Pray for them to run. Word of God says, the race is not given to the, the swift. But the one who endures to the end. It's not a sprint, y'all. The Christian life is a marathon. So we must run this race. in the pursuit of Christ's likeness. Because like Jesus is who we want to be like. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we just thank you. for your word. We thank you, Lord, for uh, this opportunity that, that, that uh, was given unto me today to preach your word. Lord, you have given us, Lord, the spirit, Lord, to empower us to live this life, this Christian life. Let us use the power that you have given us, Lord, to be conformed to the image of your son. Let us, Lord, do the necessary things necessary, Lord, to uh, run this race. Lord, if we misstep before let us dust ourselves off and get up and run again. Let us not get entangled about what happened yesterday or past failures. But let us, Lord, just be uh, resilient, Lord. Let us be, um, have that energy, Lord, that, that, that be, to be energetic by running after you, Lord by not putting any confidence in the flesh. But Lord, placing all of our confidence in you. Because you are the reason why we are here. You are the reason why we run this race. You are the reason why uh, we are saved, we, we have received salvation. You are the reason why. So Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for that today. We thank you for the word of God that, you know, we suppress uh, toward the upper call for the prize within Christ Jesus that we should 
forget the things that are behind and press toward the things that are ahead. Let us, Lord, have a forward focus and live this life according to the way that you want it to be lived. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, we have any first time visitors? Want to meet with Sister Kelly in the back? She has some, uh, she wants to meet and greet you. Our hearts and mind clear. Hope everyone enjoyed each other today. Um, we all dismissed.